Rabska has a move called Revival Blessing, which has one single PP that can bring a Pokemon back to life. However, if you have it carry the Lepiberry, it can actually restore that PP, which allows it to use the move twice. We pair that with Pokemon that have Explosion, and we can have some real fun with it. If you can pull it off, they can both come in and do huge damage with Explosion, and then Rabska can revive each of them using the Lepa, and effectively allow them to do it again. Alright look, I get up to a lot of shenanigans in these battles. However, today's might just be my favorite. You are definitely in for a treat. Hey, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes you a second, it really helps me out, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the alien from American Dad, and I decide to toss out the fortress. So, listen, I'm a wall, I'm a nut, I'm a wall nut, and we're here to party. This fortress is here to play the role of helping out the team with some hazards, but also, I am holding the red card. What that does is, whenever I get hit with an attack, it basically forces the opponent to switch out. So it's good for stopping potential setups, but uh, the Monkadori is actually just going to go for the parting shot here. So that does not activate the red card, and this is going to allow them a better matchup as they decide to go into the Toaster Rotom. So listen, I don't really want my nuts toasted, but I do set up the Stealth Rock, which is going to be pretty nice. And as I'm sitting here looking at this matchup, I'm thinking, maybe actually I do, I could go for some toast actually. I figure there's a high chance for an overprediction at this point, and I just decide to go for the spikes to kind of see what this wants to do. Now, they do actually end up going for the trick, which is going to give me a pair of choice specs, and they do take my red card, which kind of stirs things up a little bit here, as now I am going to be stuck into going for the spikes. Now, the reason why I'm willing to set up the hazards is mostly just because their only form of hazard removal is going to likely be on the mouse hold with like the tidy up, so I'm thinking I'm willing to just go for another layer of spikes here. It's not really worth a switch, as they can just essentially volt switch here and then get a matchup, so I stay in, they go for that volt switch that is going to break my sturdy, however now they can go into that mouse hold. So I imagine they probably want to go for that tidy up, and honestly... A little Mousehold family is pretty scary after a plus one attack in speed. So this thing does come in. Little baby mouse feet are going to take some chip from both the Stealth Rock and the Spikes. And then I just lay, you know, another layer of Spikes down. So hey, I hope you like stepping on a pile of Legos at 3am. However, at this point, you know, Mousehold being a good parent that they are, they're probably going to just pick up the Legos, go for that tidy up. However, that is going to allow me a free switch into whatever I like. So I figure it's, you know, it's time to bring in the actual bomb. So I'm going to go into the Alolan Golem here, and the good news is that I can come in for free. So ordinarily that matchup was not ideal for the Fortress. If I still had my red card, it would be a perfect opportunity, uh, you know, to stay in against the mouse hold because essentially I can just red card it as soon as it hits me. But it ends up not being a horrible situation because now I get in the bomb for free, and this thing is actually Choice Scarf. So this Golem is essentially, he's built to come in here and literally just be faster than things and just explode. Now I'm not going to be faster than the mouse hold, but they do not want to deal with this thing. So I just go for that explosion as they're actually gonna end up switching into the Tyranitar. So with Golem's ability Galvanize, this is actually not gonna be a normal type explosion and instead electric. What the fuck? And I'll tell you what, Tyranitar wanted absolutely none of that. It is gonna end up knocking that thing out. And we just basically trade Golem for Tyranitar and I am totally fine with that trade because we can actually just get Golem back with a Revival Blessing and potentially do it again. So, now we got ourselves the old empty battlefield full of rubble. Luckily, the grannies back there are okay after the explosion, and I decide to go into the Puthy. I feel like maybe I can stir some stuff up with this thing and just see, you know, what we can what we can do here. So, they decide to go into the Monkey Dory, and I'm just gonna go ahead and smack him around a little bit with the Fake Out. So, this is the Technician Persian with just a whole bunch of coverage, paired with the... Uh, the Stab Hyper Voice, which activates the Throat Spray, I can kind of just come in with some surprising attacks uh, and just see what this thing can do. So, I realize that I am naturally faster than this thing, but I'm not going to be able to knock it out with a Hyper Voice, and I'm thinking the Fast Persian in the back might be clutch for later. So, what I'm going to do is just predict the something like a Sludge Bomb. I'm going to end up going into the Fortress here. Maybe I can get this thing in for free uh, and potentially get backup hazards or just Volt Switch, but... They end up going for the parting shot again, and this monkey's being a real dickhead. He just straight up just, he's always just leaving me high and dry. But they get the nice little pivot here, which is going to allow them to switch into whatever they want against the fortress. Now, they know that I am choice spec, so there's not a whole lot that I can do, especially against a Torterra. So, this thing coming in is kind of bad news. Now, most of the time you see these, they are going to be like a loaded dice set with Shell Smash. And I am a frightened little nut. So I decide to go into the Persian here. I'm thinking, depending on what nature this is, after a Shell Smash, uh, with my like base 115 speed, I could potentially be faster than this thing. I do also threaten it with that Technician boosted Icy Wind. Uh, but regardless, Torterra is an extremely scary Pokemon for me here. 
and they do actually also have the herb to be able to basically get rid of the defense drop and Puthi is over here just basically scared as hell not having the, the best time so we get hit by some sandstorm here i decide to just go for that icy wind to see if i can get it off however we do in fact get outran by the turtle and an earthquake does take care of the persian so we find ourselves in a pretty frightening situation here but i do have some answers and i feel confident that we can get through the turtle so what i'm gonna do is go into the shift tree so this is a set that is basically i'm focus sash so i know that i can take a hit from this thing as long as it's not a multi-hit um, i can set up the tailwind get the wind rider boost um and then you know i just kind of explode so the torterra is in fact going to go for the terra here a lot of the time you do see a terra fire and that's what i imagine with the terra blast their answer is going to be to the shift tree um, so they do go for that terra fire literally just light the tree on fire on his back uh, we're just starting a forest fire out here go for that terra blast uh, and since they are faster of course i get knocked down to my sash but that is perfect that's exactly what we wanted to happen here because now I can go for the Tailwind, and Shiftery is about to fly, baby, and get his guts all over the place. Pause. But I go for that Tailwind. Um, that's going to give me a nice little boost in speed, but also, uh, with the new buff to Shiftery, we do get the Wind Rider activated, which does give us an attack boost, and the only thing that kills this is going to be an explosion. So, I'm going to go for the explosion here, as they actually end up switching out, not wanting to risk the Torterra, and they're going to go back into the Toast. So, guess what, buddy? I hope you like your Toast well done, because we go for this explosion, and... After an attack boost, it's actually not quite going to be enough to knock out the Toaster Rotom. That thing, it's a true testament to how just annoying Rotom is in general. It is able to live that, but we do get so much chip on it that it should be easy to take care of. And now, I find myself in a situation where my dudes are dead. So, what I'm going to do is just go into switching to Ballin real quick, and I can go for a Revival Blessing here. Now, I am actually going to be faster because of the Tailwind still being up, and I go for that Revival Blessing. So, this is a 1 PP move. It's only designed to be used once, but since we have the Lepiberry, we go ahead and just get that 1 PP back. I can then just glue back the pieces of Donut and revive our dude once again. Ready to explode, and ready to have a good time. So, they end up going for the Volt Switch here, uh, which I do take nicely because I'm like a special defensive build. And they can go into whatever they want, which ends up being the Mouse Hold. So... This is, again, a very scary Pokemon for me at this point. It's fast. It has the opportunity to set up, but I'm just going to go ahead and go for another Revival Blessing here as they actually end up going for the Tidy Up. So even though there's no hazards on the field, that is just basically uh, a nice little Dragon Dance for, for the mice here. They do get that plus one attack and speed, and I just go ahead and go for that Blessing again. And guess what? The two Exploders are going to be back and essentially just ready to do it again. And... We've effectively done the impossible, which is using two revives in a Wi-Fi battle, and we're ready to go here. So, Tailwind goes away, it doesn't really matter at this point, however, I'm just going to go for the Reflect. They actually end up trying to go for the Encore, and it turns out if you have no PP left, you, you literally cannot be Encored. I thought that would have uh, basically put me to a point where I would just have to, like, struggle, but you learn something new every day, and I actually get up a free Reflect, which is actually amazing. So now, they go for the Population Bomb, and behind the Reflect, even with a critical hit... Uh, they do actually hit me six times, but Rabska is the absolute goat, and we're able to live through it, um, and then fire off a nice little bug buzz at him just for just a little bit of damage here. Now, it doesn't end up knocking this thing out, which does kind of suck, um, but Rabska has done exactly what I need it to do at this point, and they actually end up going for the Encore on the bug buzz. So, it is going to end up knocking out the Mousehold with the bug buzz here, but that's going to open up the opportunity for them to bring back in the Fire-type Torterra, uh, who can essentially freely get up that Shell Smash, and they're kind of banking on the fact that this Torterra uh, might be the win condition here. So, in comes Torterra. This thing is at full. I am locked into Bug Buzz, and I decide to go into the Donut. So here's the thing. I literally, I know they have to go for a Shell Smash here. That's the reason why they set up the Encore, and I can bring in the Alolan Golem. So, they do go for that Shell Smash. Now, they don't have their White Herb anymore to obviously get rid of uh, the defense drops, but... They are going to be faster than Golem here. I am Choice Scarf, but I'm literally still just a boulder. The Pioneers used to ride these babies for miles, but we're not going to be outspeeding the fast turtle. So, the plan is this. I feel like I can bait them into an Earthquake, go for a Flying Terra, and then knock them out with the Stone Edge. And it is time to execute. Donut trying to grab his second kill of the day. He's feeling better after being exploded. I go for that Flying Terra that's going to basically put some balloons on my head and just lift me, lift me up just enough to where Earthquake cannot touch me. So... They do actually end up going for that Earthquake. We obviously are floating above it, and now it's time to hit a Stone Edge, which luckily Donut is amazing. We are able to connect on the Stone Edge, and that takes care of the Torterra. So that could not have gone better. The Terra was 
perfectly used there and at this point their biggest sweeper is going to be out of the way but they do still have some threats in the back and we are not done yet i am of course choice scarfed into that stone edge so i can't technically explode but they do go back into the toaster here this thing can outspeed and just knock me out with a thunderbolt being you know flying type so I decided to just go into Rabska. You know, listen, this thing did exactly what it needed to do. It actually put the team and that ball on his back, and I'm ready to just sack this thing off to be able to get you know, a free switch against this thing. So I bring in the Rabska. They do actually end up knocking me out with the Volt Switch, uh, which turns out to be great because now with that Volt Switch kill, they have to switch into what they want to go into first, and then I can kind of make note of that and then go into my switch. So they end up going back into the monkey dory and listen buddy's been pissing me off all day this thing basically just goes for parting shots i actually don't know what item this thing is at this point i imagine probably like choice specs is what i've kind of seen in the past but i decide to go back into the fortress now i'm thinking i can get up the stealth rock before they end up going back into rotom uh, and then the rotom heat dies upon switch in so they know that's the plan they end up actually going for the parting shot once again uh, and my little choice scarf walnut ass is gonna go for that stealth rock but they bring in the rotom just before the rocks get laid nice and it, now this thing comes in basically for free so i do at least get the rocks up for later uh, but at this point i figure walnut is not really going to be super useful at this point i am choice scarfed into that freaking stealth rocks or respect so i just go for it again they end up knocking me out with the overheat and at least with this thing special attack dropped he does stay in this thing can't essentially switch back in at this point and i figured this rotom is kind of free now so I decide to go into the muck. Listen, I've been saving the old pile of sludge for just a situation like this, and I'm really hoping that this thing doesn't have something like the Will-O-Wisp, um, but I just go for the knockoff to try to knock this thing out. It does actually end up having the Will-O-Wisp, uh, so that does, you know, kind of limit my physical capabilities here with the old sludgy boy, but I just go for the knockoff here. But unfortunately, being burnt, of course, it's actually not going to take care of this thing. Now, they are still holding my red card. The good news is when you knock off a red card, it actually does not activate, so... That would have been really bad if it forced a switch there because basically all I have left are my two exploders. So I just go for the poison jab here. They're actually just going to go for the trick uh, as a last ditch effort here. Now they don't have anything to give me, but they take my blob of black sludge uh, and that just kind of limits the recovery that this, uh, this muck can do. Um, but that's fine. I'm able to take care of it with the poison jab there. So Rotom gone. And now they are down to two Pokemon left. There is going to be a Mimikyu, and then they obviously have the Monkey Dory in the back. So Mimikyu, at this point, is the biggest threat. Now, I really just need to be able to knock off this thing's Disguise ability just to be able to open it up for a kill here. And Muck is actually in a pretty decent spot uh, to win this matchup, depending. So they actually end up going for the Swords Dance here. This is why all my homies hate Mimikyu. They basically... They get up a free Swords Dance, and it just hits extremely hard. They also have priority. Uh, but I go for the knockoff here. I actually also end up getting the Poison Touch to activate, and uh, that is going to break his disguise. So we poison him, knock his little head down, and essentially just knock his ass to the dirt and steal his lunch money. Also getting rid of his life orb. Um, now I'm feeling like I could probably take at least one attack from this thing. Muck is a pretty bulky fella, and if I wasn't burnt, a Poison Jab would definitely be a kill here, especially with the poison damage at the end. Uh, regardless, I just have to go for that poison jab. They end up going for the shadow sneak here, which is I'm going to be able to live that nice and easy. Um, and I can just go for this jab. Doesn't quite do enough, of course, being burnt. But seeing the damage from that shadow sneak is likely their only uh, kind of neutral hit against the, the muck at this point. And that's actually amazing. We love to see when our little sup boy is able to make some stuff happen. So they go for another shadow sneak here. I am able to barely live it with 7 HP. And muck just literally gave all he had into that. And another poison jab takes care of the Mimikyu. So here's the situation. They are down to one final Pokemon being the monkey. I do end up knocking myself out with the burn damage, but listen, Muck did exactly what we needed it to do here. Uh, and now it's me and my two bombs versus one monkey. So I am at half health, uh, which is unfortunate when you go for the revival blessing. But here's the thing. I think that this thing is choice. Now I'm going to go into the Shiftry first and I figure they're going to be able to outspeed me and knock me out, but it depends on what they want to go for here. Uh, so, Shiftry coming in, they probably have something like a Sludge Wave to be able to knock this thing out. Um, but I'm just going to click Explosion anyway, and they actually end up going for the Focus Blast. So, that being a super effective hit, obviously going to end up knocking out uh, the Shiftry. And the reason why they lock themselves into Focus Blast uh, is to have enough damage, hopefully, against the Alolan Golem. Now, if you remember, I am still Terra Flying. I feel like the reason why they don't go for a Poison move there is because it does 30% to Golem. However, with my Flying Type Pass, I might actually be able to live a Focus Blast, and I can go for an Explosion. They do go for that Focus Blast, and Alolan Golem is barely able to live, which opens the door for a nice little... 
And while we do sacrifice ourselves, that is easily gonna be enough to take care of the Monkey Dory. And here's the thing, since I knocked my own HP to zero first before knocking them out, technically on the scoreboard, I am actually going to log a loss. I could have easily clicked Earthquake just to knock out the Monkey Dory and grab the win, but literally what fun is that? The explosion, that's why we're here, baby. That's gonna be the end of the game. And that was actually one of the most insane endings ever. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Listen, I know this was a longer video, and I do appreciate for those of you who did stick around. If you did, go ahead and comment explosion, and I appreciate all the support. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.